If what I really want is the derivative of the original function, which is dy on dx, do you see I can combine these two to get the dy and the dx pieces that I need? Watch. dy on dx is a fraction. Is it not dy on du multiplied by du on dx? Right? It's a bit weird because we're considering d on dx both as an operator and then d on dx of stuff as a fraction that we can move around. But it's true. dy is a little change in y, du is a little change in u, and dx is a little change in x. And if it's the same little change, then just like anything else in fractions, you can cancel them. These are going to cancel and leave you with the derivative that you actually want. So I'm just going to write what I know these things to be. dy on du is 3u squared. What's du on dx? It's just 1. Now, being that I'm now working out dy on dx, I don't need to talk about this substitution that I introduced before. right? So I can just say dy on dx and get rid of all of the u's. Replace it with the substitution I started with which I think you'll find if you expand, because x plus 2 squared is what? x squared plus 4x plus 4, right? Then you multiply by 3. And sure enough, this is what you get. OK? Yeah? Why can't you just, if you do any substitution, we could just treat x plus 2 as one thing and then do normal differentiation? When you say just treat it as a normal thing, you have to expand to do that successfully, right? Um, if, for example, and I'm going to get into I deliberately picked a really simple one, right? If I put something messy in here, let's just try this, actually. Let me write this off on the side. If I said differentiate this instead, x squared minus 4 will do. And let's still do it the power of 3. Okay. Um, may, I hope this is getting at what you're asking. How come I can't just bring this power out the front and then reduce it by 1? How come I can't just say this? like that. And the answer is because you'll get the wrong answer. If you go ahead and you do the expansion, right? you'll get your four terms, you'll see what happens with the powers, and then you'll get an answer at the end. If on the other hand you try this and you expand it, you will not get the same thing. It just doesn't work. Right? And so why are we considering it like this? Well, because some of the rules that we've applied, like just thinking about this as a normal object, don't work in this new calculus world that we're exploring. And so that's why we introduce better tools that will do this. So why is it called chain rule? Why is it called chain rule? Uh, chain rule is so named because of this step here. There is, as it were, a chain of derivatives that have been sort of stuck together. And if you chain them along in the correct way to get things cancelling, then you get the derivative that you want. So this chain of derivatives gets you to this result which is much quicker than having to expand. Uh, I don't have to write all this out. I can eventually, once I'm more comfortable with this, kind of do a lot of this in my head. But this is what's happening behind the scenes. It's also called, it's a bit more awkward, but it's more a descriptive name. In addition to chain rule, this is worth writing down, it's called the function of a function rule. Do you remember I introduced u? I introduced a new function, right? And that function is having another function applied to it. That makes it a function of a function. But it doesn't quite roll off the tongue the same way as chain rule. So you'll hear me quote the first and not the second. Okay?